And joining us live via Skype is uh, Lead Reputation Manager, Tubosun Akeju. Good afternoon, Mr. Akeju. Good afternoon. I'm good to have you. How are you doing? Thank you. Very well, thank you very much. Now, I'm sure you're following this new development. Uh, three persons are on the run in uh, Borno and two persons in Kano. Um, how do you respond to this? Um, is it a manner of how they got the news? What is the problem exactly, would you say? Uh, um, I, I, think, I think the problem here is the fact that there's a lot of fear um, out there about COVID-19. Um, Clearly, you know, so because of how unpredictable, you know, this pandemic has, has been so far. And um, I think there's a, lot, a bit of stigmatization is starting to set in on victim. And um, it's also, you know, a bit difficult to be taken to an isolation center. It's almost like you're, take, you're being taken to prison. However, mm -hmm. having said that, I think that the NCDC, the National Orientation Agency, private sector players and everybody has to rise to the occasion to start to orientate people about, you know, the, the COVID-19 um, um, issue. And this thing is not a death sentence. It's not the end of life. And um, because what we've seen in Kano is that some people ran away. We've actually seen a version of that in Lagos, but people didn't run away. They rather went, you know, to unauthorized centers to be treated from the same COVID-19, and that comes with its own, you know, consequences. So what, what, what I think has happened here is that everybody is, you know, afraid of the fear of stigmatization, the fear of the unknown, and, you know, the fear of uncertainty has really, really set in, and then people are almost like they're going to run away from the reality of the fact that they have this deadly disease, and that's what I think is happening. Mm -hmm. in, in the two cases mentioned, both Kano and Borno, you know, uh, the information is that they were reached via phone. And I'm wondering, in a case as sensitive and as worrying as COVID-19, is it the best approach to use and, say, and call up someone and say, hello, well, uh, we are calling to let you know that, well, you've tested positive. Is that the best approach? What would be uh, the best way to handle, it, uh, handle this situation? So, so I hate um, cause and effect. I don't think that the only problem is how they've reached them. Um, I think it goes back to the issue of stigmatization and you know all the other issues that I mentioned earlier. Because at the end of the day, I think the one in Brno actually ran away from an isolation center if you know the information I have is very, very correct. So even or if if we look at it from that perspective or from what I the example that I mentioned in Lagos, you would see that irrespective of how the news has been communicated to those who have tested positive. One fact that is constant is the stigmatization, the fear of uncertainty, and the fear of the unknown, you know, that exists, which can, you know, make the human mind want to live in denial. Because those who run away, where are they actually running to? That's the question. Are they going to run and go and get treatment somewhere, you know? Have they heard of people going to get treatment somewhere that is working? You know, that's because there's really no logical answer to those questions as to where they've gone to at the moment, you know. So they are just, it's just the fear of the unknown. It's just how, you know, the fight or flight um, options of our mind when things like, when well, there's fear of the unknown or there's uncertainty and all of that, which, make, which is the reason why I said that well, we must start to look at, you know, looking at orientation, orientating everybody about the fact that COVID-19 is not a dead sentence. You know, I, I, I have... Personal, I've had personal interaction with one or two people who have recovered from, you know, COVID-19. Even one of them, even though it wasn't in the country, you know, didn't even have to go to the hospital to get well. But that's not the case in Nigeria. In Nigeria, if you test positive, you have to go, you know, you have to go to the hospital and, you know, be treated. You know, both in countries where their health system has been overstretched, not everybody is being taken to the hospital. So for now, I think people just need to accept it and say, this is not a death sentence. If I treat it early enough, my chances of survival even increases and then allow people to just, you know, submit um, um, themselves to uh, the assignation center and be treated appropriately. Right. Reputation Manager Tubosan Akejo, thank you so very much for your time and keep safe wherever you are. Thank you very much for having me.